All right, afternoon, everybody. Thanks for, for joining. Uh, we have another edition of Perf Sonar Office Hours starring Andy and Mark and other players to be named later, I'm sure. Uh, so for those that haven't attended one of these before, it's really just a, a forum to ask questions of Andy and Mark. You can try to stump them. You can ask them how to set stuff up. They can do demonstrations. Uh, really anything goes. Uh, I know that we just hit a, another minor release milestone a couple of weeks ago. So if you have questions about transitioning or using tools, this is the, the right place to ask. So I'm going to go back on mute uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to Andy and Mark to talk about whatever questions people may have. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. So, I mean, as, as Jason said, I, I think some of you have attended these before. It's our, our fourth one now this year. Um, kind of know the format. Mark and I don't have anything planned. We just kind of open the floor up to everyone. So if anybody wants to kick off with a question, you know, feel free to go for it. Chat's fine or feel free to unmute. So. Oh, it's an interesting question. Can people unmute? Yep. Phil just did. Hi, Phil. Hi. I'm here. All right. Um, you might actually have to tap dance, Mark. I oh. shoot. <laughs> I, I I should I should point out, by the way, that despite all the fact, all the despite all the 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 attempts to stump us and stuff, there will be no prizes today. <laughs> um, if you're coming to if you're coming to SC, feel free to come by and I'll give you some swag. <laughs> so, all right. Um, well, I guess if if anybody's got a question they'd like answered, uh, let's see. Kevin says, "Oh, for those of us who are new to this, who are you?" Um, I ask myself that question every morning. So, um, I'm Mark Fight. I work for Internet Two, um, and I basically spend my days as one of the core developers of, of Personar. And I'll let that other guy who I have no idea who he is tell you who he is. Yeah, so I'm Andy Lake. I'm with Yesnet, also one of the, the core developers on, on Perf Sonar. Um, so yeah, so, so basically we just host these, you know, it's it's kind of geared towards people who at least have heard the word Perf Sonar, I guess, right? And and so we we answer questions. So that can range from um, you know, if people already have an install, maybe they're having issues with it or have questions about it, right? We cover those. Um, if it's worthwhile, we could even talk, I guess, a little bit about what is Persona, if there's some people that have joined that aren't familiar. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the gist. So. All right, well, Phil dropped in the first stumper, which is, uh, what does this mean when P-Scheduler Troubleshoot fails uh, and what to worry about? So. Um, for those who are not familiar with that, P-Scheduler, which is the thing that does all the measurements in Personar, has a built-in troubleshooter that just kind of takes a look at a few things and makes sure things are functional. Um, so the thing that Phil pasted in um, was a message that says, um, one of the things that it does is it runs this test called idle, which is um, which basically does nothing. It's just a way to test to make sure the infrastructure works. Um, so Phil posted a message that said an idle test was missed, basically. Um, and of course, because it was missed, it didn't get a didn't get a result. Um, that looks like maybe the runner has stopped running. Um, seen that before in a couple of spots, um, and uh, I think we've done a little poking around, probably for the next release that might might help some of that. Um, Phil, are you running in a container or on bare metal or a VM? Sorry, bare metal. Okay, all right. So that's well, even more uh, interesting. Then. Actually, VM, but yeah, um, VM, VM and bare metal, I kind of treat the same. So you talk about runner not running, but mm -hmm. yet just a, just above it says checking services. It shows runner running. Yeah. Um, okay, that's even more interesting. That's probably uh, probably something we'll have to we'll have to take a look at. Um, so generally speaking, I mean the way that the 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 way the life cycle of these things goes um, when and this is this is the same for the troubleshooter. And if you're just doing stuff like command line. Um, when you put a task in, it kind of has a life cycle that it goes through. It starts with pending, um, and then it goes to, there's a little setup step, I think, and then uh, then it goes to running, and it does its business, and then there's kind of a, a cleanup and, and then finish state for, for normal ones. Um, what looks like happened here, um, because the, uh, the um, wish I could share this to the screen. Everybody look in chat, basically. Um, the error message that, that, that Phil posted 
Uh, said it tried to run an idle test at nine seconds, which is just how long until it was finished. And then it said missed. And what that means is that um, a little piece of, of maintenance code went through and looked at all the tasks that were supposed to be run. And um, this one and this this one in particular had stayed in the um, in the pending state kind of beyond its its scheduled start time. So that's it gets bumped into into the missed state. So that's usually an indication, um, and again, for, for people who are new to this, um, there are four different services inside a P scheduler, and the two that we care about for the moment are the scheduler, which is the thing that puts it on the timeline. Um, you know, it's like making a, a doctor's appointment for 2.30, um, and then the runner, which picks those off the, off the queue and uh, as, they, as their times come up and run them. So um, that looks like that didn't... Um, that didn't um, that didn't happen on your system. So if you want to stick around afterward, Phil, if it's something that you can reproduce, we can take a look at it. Sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, so what's interesting is that there's actually stuff after that. Hmm. When it's, when it's successful, I'm going to paste it into the. Yeah. Chat. As there, sh as there should be, that would sort of. Yeah. Yeah, when it's success, I mean, the, the troubleshooter kind of stops at the last thing that, at the first thing that fails and doesn't do anything more. Um, so on a, on a, on a failed run like that, it wouldn't, um, it would, there would be nothing to archive. So there's no sense in, in checking on that. Um, but we can take a look at that. Um, and if, and if, if you want to hang around, if anybody else wants to hang around after we're done, um, I can kind of, we can go take a look at it and, and troubleshoot it in detail. So sorry to give you a half a half non-answer answer, but there it is. Okay. Since um, I'm on a roll, there's another question in the chat. Oh, okay. You could just oh. ask it too. Yeah, there's one other one that came in too. Yeah. I want to hop to that real quick. I I could even take a crack at that one. Yeah, sure. Go for it. So, um, Why should I have all the Yeah. So there's a question uh uh from Justin Stroka. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, latency BG tests only run for a set period of time. How do you recommend to run them continuously? And I currently run a latency task with a repeat schedule. Also, is it reasonable to run multiple latency BG tests on the same interface at the same time? Um, so just to kind of back up and give some background for people. Uh, so in P scheduler, the, the tool that actually schedules and, and, and runs the tests, um, there's different test types, right? That correspond to the different types of measurements um, that, that uh, it's capable of doing. Uh, so one of those is the latency BG test, which that BG stands for background. Um, so the idea is that runs uh, a tool called PowStream, which is part of the OLAMP suite of tools um, that basically measures one-way delay um, and packet loss is kind of its primary purpose anyways. It's essentially sending out little UDP packets on a, a set interval. Um, so the latency there's actually two tests that that are kind of related in P scheduler. Um, one is called just latency. The other one is latency BG. Um, so the difference is latency BG runs in the background. The idea is more or less continuously. Um, and so so basically you're getting results, and then it's essentially by default you can control this with parameters. But I think in most instances, every minute it's reporting uh, results from you know whatever you know, the packets it basically sent over that course of that minute, how many, you know, what was the um, distribution of the latencies it saw, you know, getting to the other side, how many packets made it to the other side, things like that. Um, there's another test called latency, which is very similar. It runs a tool called OW ping, which is actually sending out just exactly the same type of packets, but it's more kind of like what you think of as like your discrete ping. Like it just, you tell it to send, you know, um, 50 packets or something like that, it sends those and it stops and reports the results and doesn't run anymore. Um, so I guess I'll start with your last question first because that, that one's pretty straightforward. Is it okay to, to run multiple latency BG tests on the same interface at the same time? Yes, it, it definitely is. So that that's actually um, part of the design, like P-Scheduler allows that to happen. So generally speaking, those are you know very very low bandwidth, kind of low resource intensive type tests. Um, so it, you know, basically the idea is they're running more or less continuously. You have multiple running at the same time to different places. And, you know, generally speaking, they shouldn't, shouldn't bump into each other that, that, you know, that's pretty much the standard way people run them is, is, is multiple at the same time. Um, so the other part of the question is how do I run them continuously? 
Uh, so I'll talk about how usually they get configured and, and you can, maybe Justin, you can kind of um, help me understand where, where you're doing things differently. Um, so generally the way people configure this uh, is either through like the toolkit UI um, or they use something called PS config, which does have its own UI, but I think more, generally speaking, a lot of people manage those by hand in, in JSON files. Um, in both cases, um, when you sketch, when you create a latency test via like the toolkit UI, it's actually creating a latency BG test in the background that does run continuously. Um, likewise, I know most, I'm pretty much all of our examples actually use latency BG for PS config as well. Um, so PS config will read the file, it'll set up a latency BG test. It actually puts an end time of 24 hours on it and then just recreates it every 24 hours just so tests don't get orphaned if like your config goes away or something like that. Um, so really most places you have latency BG. Now you do have the ability to run the non BG version. So just latency and then tell it to like, you know, run for a minute or something like that. And then, you know, run every hour or something like that, which sounds like maybe what you're doing. So I guess my, maybe my question back to you, Justin, is how are you, how are you configuring the test? Are you using PS config? Are you using a UI? Are you just running stuff on the, the command line? Um, so I tried running the latency BG tests. Um, as a repeat job, but that's what I was wondering. They have a 24 hour end time on them. So like, would you recommend setting it up in a JSON to repeat every 24 hours if we wanted to run continuously or? Nope, nope. you don't actually have to set up any, any repeat on them. So PS config kind of handles that end time aspect for you. Like you don't actually specify, do it every 24 hours. Like you put it in your config, you say, you know, this is, you know, use these source and desks and send this number of packets or, or whatever the parameters are. And you just set that and it'll just, it'll just run it continuously by default. You don't have to do anything special. Um, okay. And yeah, maybe, it automatically ends in that 24 hours for you. So. Okay. Because maybe it was a bug. Like we want to run it continuously against the same hosts if possible. So we can measure our latency over the course of even a month's time and see like if we're getting issues happening and that's where like with that 24 hour run runtime i need to re-kick the test off again every 24 hours is what you, i'm getting you don't have to re-kick the test off like so so I, I feel like something else is happening here so if you're using ps config it's pulling down the json yeah you you might see a 24 hour end time but by the time that 24 end time hour to end time is up there will already be a new test a new, schedule. Like a new test okay. definition that that is scheduled so it just uh, it just does that and it kind of just to like again avoid orphaning tests if something goes wrong. But yeah, it'll it'll keep creating them forever. So okay, I'll try it does to... not let us know. Yeah. So yeah, can I Louis, if I could add something to your answer, Andy? Um, one other distinction that's that's important between uh, latency and latency BG is um, is how they're scheduled. So P scheduler has in it a bunch of different scheduling classes, and I won't go into just like four of them. Um, but generally speaking, you know, generally speaking, for example, you don't want to run two throughputs together because they'll be, they'll be fighting for interface bandwidth on, on the way out. Um, so you don't do that. The other thing that we have set up is that, uh, the way latency is scheduled, it is scheduled so that it will not run against, um, at the same time as a, say as a throughput, it'll run against other things like round trip time or, you know, or, uh, trace or anything else like that. Latency BG, on the other hand, just sort of runs continuously in the background and will take whatever, essentially it'll take whatever hit it has to take. Um, you know, like if a throughput runs at the same time, you might it might distort the results a little bit. So the the kind of the difference between them is if you want a nice, precise one-shot latency measurement, you run latency. And if you want a, a stream of them and you're willing to kind of deal with the um, you know, with the with the occasional distortion from running a throughput test, um, you run latency BG. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Cool. All right. So I think I think we probably covered that one. Um, I think so we, Phil, Phil's other question is going to be you. I think. Yeah. So I think the question is: so um, when you load up a basically the the default set of Grafana dashboards that we. Um, uh, ship. There's basically a main page you get with some like summary stats about what's running. And then on the side menu, um, actually, you know, I can actually maybe even share my screen here. 
Uh, uh, just give me one second. And right. So this is just like a standard standard toolkit page, and I know I know Phil knows this because he's asking about it, but just <laughs> just for everybody else's benefit. Um, so this is kind of a standard toolkit page. Um, you know, this is just a dev instance I have set up. Uh, and so I think what Phil's asking about is down here in the corner, um, there's basically a list of dashboards that it lists that you can click through um, uh, that, that basically like I, I, I've set these up for just some different testing that, that I was doing at one point. Um, and so if you click through, they have like uh, different grids and, and things like that. Um, so like if I click through one of these. Yeah, I was gonna say I haven't I haven't messed with this host. This is like a dev host in uh, in GCP, so it doesn't surprise me those aren't running. Um, but but normally you'd get grids. Um, so I think what Phil is asking is by default I think always it has this all personar measurements um listed, and so I think Phil you're asking if it would be possible to drop that. Is that is that right? Um, and, and basically what it does is it puts all the grids from like everything listed beneath it on on the same page. Um. So I don't think it does that. No, it doesn't do that. What 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 are you? What's on yours? I just get the uh, uh, output from uh, uh, one one grid. So I have an all by all by all, and a, a few other uh, items. Well, and I just get. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say like you can see mine. Like I didn't do anything special. Like by default, it just dumps every every kind of grid on this page. It's just an equivalent of something that was in the old Mad Dash. And again, I have a bad picked a bad dev host because they aren't here. But you'll see I had two two grids right GCP tests and uh, congestion control algorithm tests. And so you'll see the GCP throughput, GCP packet loss, GCP trace route, and then it switches to my congestion control algorithm tests that I had going. Oh, and then some more GCP ones. But um. Could you go yeah. to the dashboards on this screen? Um, like, like, like the corner no where data. you are. Yeah. So, uh, can I go to the dashboards? I'm... It's right on the upper right. Okay. Is that that what it, you were? Let's go to the upper right dashboards, and then open that one. Now that all persona is the same as I think GCP tests. No, so it's the combination of these two things. Because see, GCP tests is just GCP throughput, packet loss, and trace, and then a packet loss with a different bucket width. And okay. just just to show for completeness, the CC algorithm one is a bunch of different congestion control algorithms. Um, and then if I go to all, it starts with GCP, and then it goes into the congestion control algorithms. It's what it's supposed to do. So I see. I guess what I have is I have a number of different grids that I drop onto the main system, but they're actually running on different machines. And so there's only one thing to show. Did I, did I say that right? So I have. Oh. Is it possible to do a screen share? Well, actually, uh, I, don't, I don't think you can. Sorry, I don't. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to figure out Zoom. Um, so so let me say it again. So I, I have a one grid that's thirty by thirty. Okay. And that's running on a on a host, obviously. And then I have another uh, kind of separate Grafana host that's running just some three by threes and some disjoints and et cetera, et cetera. And what I do is I take those. Um, PS config remote list URLs that come up and paste it into the main uh, main grid or the main dashboard area. And so in the dashboard area, I get my main 30 by 30 grid, and then I get my other little guys. And so okay. I think what you're saying is that the all persona measurements will only show what's on the host that it's on. It, 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 does. it should be, so basically, let me phrase it a little bit differently. So you have a Grafana host, you've gone in, you've PS, on that Grafana host, you've PS config remote added multiple you know, URLs to JSON files, right? Like there's multiple yes. files. So the all persona measurements I think should, 
should include everything from both JSON files. And I'm trying to, let me, let me go back here. Um, whoops, clicking the wrong thing. I think, I can't remember if these are in two different ones or not. Um, nope, okay, so this one's only in one. I would think it would merge two, but maybe maybe there's an issue where it's just grabbing like the last one or the first one or something like that. That might be worth looking at. I don't know that I have a good example of a toolkit that has multiple handy, so I can't double check that, but I can make a note of it. That That's my best guess is maybe, or maybe for some reason it's failing when it hits one of them, or I, I, I don't know when it's building that dashboard. But I, I think I see what the intent is now and it wasn't what I thought the intent was. And so that that's good. So I understand it now that it's uh, if you have multiple PS config remote ads on the same host, they're going to show all the, all the grids from that. Yep. I haven't had multiple hosts and, but you can paste it all in there and they all appear in the dashboards, but they actually are from separate hosts. So I, I think I understand what's going on. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. Might, we can look, maybe may, it might be a bug where it's just not picking up all of them, so, yeah. Do you think it should cover all the hosts or do you think it should just cover from the host that it's running on? No, because like the Grafana instance has no concept of like local host, right? It's like, it just, you know, there's a list of URLs, you know, essentially. Yeah, yeah. So that all gets built by the same PS config agent. So like it, it doesn't know the difference between local and remote really. So it should have everything is what I'd expect. So it's possible something's not right there. Um, let me show you, I think I can show you the, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll paste into chat my long list of uh, URLs. Maybe you can take a look at it after I get it pasted in there. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Maybe send it to one of us in Slack too, just so it persists after the meeting leaves. Okay. Um, you want me to take Kathy's question? Uh, yeah, sure. Go for okay, it. Okay, sure. So Kathy's question is that she's uh, trying to configure two network interfaces on a Debian 12 machine with both interfaces on the same subnet. Um, and she says, had it working on, on CentOS 7, but have unable to been, been unable to find the specifics of how to do it on uh, Deb 12. Do you have a reference? Um, I don't know. That we, I think we have some some docs on how to do that in the documentation, don't we? Or maybe yeah, so, um, um, yeah, so so basically, uh, so same subnet too. Uh, so we have some documentation on basically multiple interfaces. Um, so uh, we have a script in particular uh, that you need to run on, and this isn't necessarily a perf sonar thing. <laughs> this is just a, a general routing thing when you have multiple interfaces. We have a script though that sets up the routing tables. So they basically honor source addresses um, when they're specified, like when you do P scheduler task throughput, you know, dash dash source and specify the actual source address. Um, funny enough, if you don't set up the routing tables a particular way, um, basically, by default, uh, Linux will essentially just ignore what's in the source header or <laughs> the source IP source address for the in the IP header, um, and just use normal routing. It'll just look at the desk and, and send it on its way. Um, so basically, there's some scripts we have that set up that say if the source is set, you know, actually honor the source, which sounds kind of weird that you have to have to do that, but it's been this way for pretty much ever. Very um, long time, yeah. Yeah, it's a very long time. Um, and so there's a script that ships with the toolkit. It's called mod interface route. I think we have a docs page. I can try and look in the background while I'm talking that, that talks about using it. I know we run it on ESNet because we have many interfaces on our persona nodes. And um, it's actually one of the more common things I run into is like that script hasn't run or something gets rebooted and, and loses the changes or, or something that that's made and you just run it again and everything's happy. So very much still needed. Um, uh, I think that should work even when things are on the same subnet. I know sometimes things can get hairy when you've got things on the same subnet because it's, it's short to do, but I, I think that should basically still should work the same basically because I think the source ultimately dictate which interface that went out of. 
Yes, I, I believe that's the case. If if you have a pointer to that, Andy, specifically that you could share, because I've, I've done so much searching and so much Googling and uh, just haven't quite been able to get there. <laughs> okay, I just put the, the link in the chat. I was able to find the page. Got um, it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And and more more generally, the thing that that gets done to make that work is called policy routing. Yep. Yes. Okay. I will try going. I I have run through this, and there's still something I am not quite getting right. I think. Um, but thank you. I will. I will revisit. Okay. Okay. Um, looks like we have one from from Matt. Oh, I can take that one. Okay. Um, so Matt, I think we might just have to create an issue on on this one because I think generally you're right. There's there's just a couple commands with PS archive, and so that's maybe a newer one, and maybe it just isn't processing the the help option. I think that's a pretty pretty simple script. Um, so so basically, uh, much very similar to what Mark was showing or talking about earlier with PS capture or troubleshoot. There's a PS archive command, which handles looking at basically the open search and log stash pieces that are used to store measurements. There's actually a PS archive troubleshoot command that does very similar things, just does some sanity checks to make sure the right pieces are running and can talk to each other and all that good stuff. Um, this particular command is, uh, uh, I think, ISM stands for index state management. So those are basically the rules that are in open search that determine how long to keep data around before deleting it. Um, so there's a command in there to basically reset those back to the defaults. And in particular, I think there was a couple of releases where some there was some goofiness going on with ISM. So that basically just helps you get back to square one. Um, and so it looks like maybe it's not processing the help option. So um, I'm, I'm making a note of that right now. We'll create an issue on that. I'm sure it's an easy fix. I'm, I'm guessing it's just not processing that. It's just not processing probably command line options. Because the PS archive troubleshoot very much does have a help option. So that's where that came from. So yeah, thank you for, for pointing that out. All right. Um, so next one is, is there a perch on our Slack? Um, uh, so, so there is a Slack. Um, we, uh, I don't know, it, it's mostly developers, but yeah. We, I don't know. We're not. We don't have too strict of a policy, I guess, about who who we let in there. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I mean, and in general, I mean, if, you know, when it first started, or at least when I first started, I think that Slack existed already. But um, for the most part, it's for the development team. Um, usually, we put um, usually we put some. Uh, um, we'll we'll add you know we'll add people when their input is useful, sort of for the development that we're doing. Um, you know, or some of our or people from some of our our heavier user groups. Um, one of the things that we're sort of concerned about, we, that we've been sort of concerned about, about opening it up to the general public is that it would sort of become like a real-time support line and then we wouldn't be able to get any work done, which could be a bit of a, a problem for us. Um, I absolutely, I think I could probably speak for Andy here. I, I absolutely would not object to, you know, if, if people in the community wanted to start one and run it, um, we would probably look in on it from time to time. Um, but, so and I'm not, we've we've talked. The development team has talked about opening up the development Slack to to others uh, or kind of to the public occasionally, and we've always kind of come down on the side of of let's not. Okay, I, I have a couple of questions if I can. So, yeah, go for it. Is that okay? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Uh, so this is a question for Andy. Can you please go back to that personal page that you were actually helping with Phil, helping Phil with, you know, his questions? Yes. Give me one second to find that window. So this one? Yes. So, yeah, the first thing is I can see. So in this page, if I look at it, so they run the latency BG and the trace, they're actually running continuously. Is that correct? Uh, so the latency VG is running continuously. The trace kind of looks that way because it's zoomed out to the last 24 hours, but it traces every 10 minutes it runs. Okay. 
Okay, and then in this case, this is so. What is the significance of the colors? Because why is throughput in green and the packet loss and jitter two? You know, they're actually in purple or red. What is the significance of the difference of that color? Uh, so the colors are just, so this is just a count of the different test types. And so the colors are just to distinguish the different test types. I think they're automatically picked by uh, Grafana in this case. So there's nothing special about blue other than that's what it tagged to distinguish the latent CBG from the throughput. So, you know, basically this is showing at any one interval, you know, at, at this particular at 2320, I think these are, are these five minute intervals. Yeah, at this particular five minute interval, there was five trace route tests that ran and 69 latent CBG tests that ran, so. Okay, so so that means actually from in this plot, they were actually running continuously and the colors essentially showing the numbers. But for example, in this, how do I tell if, uh, Let's say, I mean, half of the plot is empty, which means none of these tests are running, correct? Right. So like if like this first half here was just all blank, right. nothing, right? right. Yeah, no tests were running. Yep. So how do you know exactly what is, why it is not running? How do so, you find it from this plot? Yeah. So I think from this plot, it's not going to tell you why things are not running. Okay. Um, you know, if, if you want to stick to graphically looking at it, you know, maybe you'll be able to derive something from this mm -hmm. page here, this host info page. Like, for example, if um, I looked here and I saw the piece heads or runner was all red, you know, maybe it corresponds to the time that, that I wasn't getting any tests. That would be an indicator like, oh, OK, uh, process stopped. That's important to actually running the test, right, or something like that. Um, so you might be able to determine stuff that way. Um, if there's nothing obvious, like on this page, you might, you'd like yeah. you'll have to actually log into the host and like that P schedule or troubleshoot command will come into play. Uh, that PS archive troubleshoot command could come into play. So, right. So usually you have to figure out, okay, is it just because my tests aren't running or are they running? And maybe we can't just, maybe we're unable to store the results for some reason, um, or things like that. Okay. So, so usually starting there. And so usually the best way to start is with a PS scheduler troubleshoot and that PS archive troubleshoot. And depending on what's happening, you know, things can get weird. So sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it isn't. So, um, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. No, I think that's, that was my, so that was my question in a sense that right now I'm going to actually paste in the chat window um, one of my personas that I'm running right now. And that's what I was trying to understand. Yeah. If you look at this one, so this is, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's Okay. That's just a. Something, something. Okay, sorry. That can I just delete that one? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry. Give me a time. Uh, two minutes. So, uh, I'm actually going to bring in Opsona. Yes. Yeah, so, let's see this one. It's uh, this one, right? So, if you go to that one, I don't know if you guys can access it, but uh, if Andy, yeah, if you can place. So that pays, if you can just click on and share it for others. Yep, yep, so I see it. Okay. So yeah, it looks like yes. things are running until right about right. midnight. And when things happen at midnight, that makes me think a cron job, but, um, or something similar, uh, right right at that, that time. Right, uh, right, so it's not. So yeah, if you go to host info, you can see all the processes actually green, mm -hmm. all the services, right? Yep. All so this is, awesome. right. You know, so this is where I, you know, this, and this, this is actually happening. This is mostly happening to my latency node because I have two nodes. One is dedicated to latency. The other one is bandwidth. This is the latency node. I don't know. I don't know why actually I'm getting a bandwidth test. test. That was other question. Why, why there's a throughput test in this node? I didn't, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So that's one thing. But then this node is frequently running into this particular kind of interruptions in the tests yeah. running. And I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand right now. Um, yeah, I have not gone into the node and to look at all the piece schedule or triple sort or whatever, but this is just, I just noticed. Actually, I'm right now, I'm on vacation <laughs> away, <laughs> but I'm actually looking into, you know, so, but I just noticed that this particular test, I mean, the node, the tests have stopped running, mm -hmm. and, but the host, all the services look okay in terms of green, but I have not logged into the node to run anything. So I might, this is what I'm trying to understand that from, from a front page, what would you, and, and uh, combined with the host info, what would be your initial, mm -hmm. I mean, like, yes, 
what is it called? An assumption that what could have gone wrong. Like, well, that's what I was just kind of speaking, some kind of thing. So that I can take a look at that, or I can just go ahead and run a piece scheduler troubleshooting to find out. Yeah, well, like I said, what seems really suspicious to me is this happened at exactly midnight, right? Is is it's when things dropped off. And so um, it, it's got processes running. It, it almost yeah. makes me wonder if, uh, I mean, I don't know if you have anything extra running on the host itself or okay. we, maybe poke poke into piece scheduler. Like it almost means it looks like something start getting blocked or something like that as well on the network. I, I, I don't know. So, so that's so, the yeah. first thing that that time is suspicious to me just because it's like so exact. And that's like a common time to run things. I don't know if anything on the toolkit that we actually run. Um, the other thing I was kind of looking at, which maybe this would be 41 minutes later though, which is, um, excuse me, as there was a big CPU drop, which means it stopped doing stuff. <laughs> Um, right, right, I don't right. know what that stuff is, you know, just looking at that, but definitely looks like around midnight, something was going on. So, you know, probably logging in and looking at system logs, um, okay. things like that okay. around midnight would, would, would probably be informative. The other thing that's a little suspicious, which I don't totally understand is, is why these are missing. Um, so there's like, a, especially since everything else is there, it's, it's basically right. some, the, the persona specific stats, basically the non-system stats, um, so the th same thing that pulls the host, host metrics pulls these. So, so that's obviously still working. Um, there's basically a little endpoint that it's reading from to just grab these periodically and write them to the local database. Um, so that, that's also a little suspicious. I don't know if that's related or not. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so, so it looks like there's a couple of weird things. But yeah, I think you're probably going to have to actually get on the host, host for this one. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, no, that, that's actually very helpful because I do, I will. I mean, once I'm actually in the time... I'm sure. actually in a time zone, which is 12 hours away or out in sync with the US. So I will, yeah, I'll take a look at it. But yeah, no, thanks for the information. And I, what is it called? Uh, I think it's, I'm just suspecting if there is a firewall that might have, you know, my colleague in the US, he he might have tinkered with some of the firewall issues, but I don't know if that actually, why would that affect this node? But I have another node, which is the bandwidth node that actually keeps going without any issues. Okay. I will take a look at it. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. I think that was very helpful. And and do drop us a line. I mean, you can drop the developers or the user list a line as well if if you know if you Oh yes, I will. I will. Yes. I will. Thank you, Mark. All right. Um, so I think there's another question that was kind of mixed in here. I, I know we've been kind of Is it Scott's few, question. Yeah, so Scott's question. Um, so where's a good place to start to understand how to build a Debian PS archive host and get remote measurements into it? Um, so maybe, maybe you've, you've already looked at this, but, um, kind of, I think the best page we have on that is, is this here. Um, so there's, uh, basically a page I just put in the chat. That's kind of like our cookbook for putting together a central archive. Um, it, it's not, it's pretty much agnostic as to whether it's, it's Red Hat or Debian. I think the only difference is, and it calls, calls this part out is, um, um, well, actually I can share my screen here, just showing the document, um, zoom in a little bit too. Um, so, so you basically see this page, it kind of describes the idea. It just talk, goes through, you know, setting up some measurement hosts, which maybe you've already done. So, so you, you can skip that part um, and then getting them to write to an archive. And so it starts off with setting up the archive itself. Um, and really the only difference, uh, differences are called out. So like, um, uh, uh, where's the apt install? So, oh, uh, that's right. It you actually, use the auto install uh, script. Yeah. I forget, I forgot about the auto installer script. So it has us use the auto installer script. So that automatically detects if you have Debian or Red Hat and it'll run, you know, apt install instead of DNF install basically. And then there's a couple other things like uh, uh, you need to restart Apache at, the, at this point. Um, and this is for like setting up off. And so it's, it's HTTPD and Red Hat world and Apache too here. So this should have everything you need for a Debian or, or Red Hat host is, is basically what I was trying to get at. So um, is that helpful or have you already looked at that and did get you where, where you needed to go? Hey, we got to thank you. All right, cool. Yeah, that is very helpful. It's just, I, I, I did a CentOS one and then we had to turn it off because it wasn't fully set up. 
and I need to start over again. So I'll be starting over. All right. Yeah. Well, again, let, you let us know if you have any issues. So thank you. Yeah, we've we've definitely in the last year or so we've definitely tried to, um, especially with the auto installer, we've we really tried to get the um, get a lot of the the OS specific steps. Hidden's not the right word, but you know, it's just it's a lot easier if you kind of have one step to do everything. So we've tried to automate that stuff as much as we could. Yeah, I think we've tried to do a little bit better job to consolidating and giving both equal attention. I feel like for years we were kind of more red hat biased. Oh, we were definitely that, red hat biased. That's more, more of like, I mean, Mark and I were probably the worst culprits of this. We 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 knew the red hat stuff a little bit better than, than yeah. the Debian stuff. But nowadays, like, yes, and actually all of our stuff is on Ubuntu. So um you know, I, I think we have a better mix. So, so we, yeah. And Cynet made the same at, at, at supercomputing. We made the same shift a couple of years ago. I mean, I think historically, I think, I mean, we were, I, the way we used to treat it was, um, you know, sort of the reference development was on Red Hat, um, largely because that was our, our biggest install base. Um, and then um, there, Jayon was a Debian slash Ubuntu, a big Debian slash Ubuntu user. And they, you know, we sort of treated that as a port. Um, but once, once all the, all the stuff with, um, with Red Hat and CentOS fell out a few years ago, um, we decided that it was really time to make Debian a first-class citizen. And now we have, we have different, different developers work in, in different environments and we've taken a whole bunch of steps internally to, to kind of make that good for, for either environment. So, um, yeah, that's, that's probably that's, also Go ahead. That's good to hear. Yeah. We, we've been a Debian shop for, you know, 15 years. And uh, so, it, you know, we tried to use the Personar uh, packages on Debian, and uh, it, I think they weren't fully baked, or, or maybe just our understanding of how how they worked wasn't fully baked. Uh, so I'm looking forward to trying again. I, it should go better this time. Yeah, the auto installer, but I think takes a lot of the a lot of the grunt work out of it, you know, because it's just one thing. You tell it what you want, what you want it to do, and it goes and does it. That sounds great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, have we missed anybody? Let me just run back through the yep, that's good. through the chat here. Yeah, I'm not asking. I'm not answering the Slack question again. <laughs> Did that one already? Um, anybody else have anything? Um, if any of you are going to supercomputing, I think there will be a couple of us there next uh, this year. Um, I'll be there. I think uh, Shimon Troka from. PSNC will be there. Uh, I think that might actually be all of us this year. Is but, Carl? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Carl will be there. Yeah, Carl Sacco will be there too, because he's doing sign that with me. So um, so put a little plug for that. But you know, do do find us, try not to throw anything at us. Um all that sort of thing. And just because it's not too too long after, a bunch of us will also be at TechX. Yeah, that's true. In Boston in, in early December. We actually, if, if you haven't registered already and aren't interested, um, we do have an all-day workshop. Um, the first, it's on the Monday, uh, so I think December 8th. Um, it's basically all day. The plan is Mark and I will be there, a couple of the other developers, and we're going to go through kind of just you know, basically a, a persona install from scratch, uh, like writing to a central archive. Um, we'll do some stuff at the end too uh, with um, Grafana and like building some cu custom Grafana dashboards and things like that. So I think we have a pretty full slate of things. Um, have pretty good, you know, good amount of uh, regist uh, people registered already, but there are some slots still open. So if, if you are interested, um, you know, consider registering for that. It is a separate registration and there is a separate registration fee for that. Um, it does include lunch though. So um <laughs> Uh, and, and so, yeah, if, if you're interested, encourage people to, to sign up for that. We'll also be giving a talk and, and, and things there as well, but, and, and just generally be around so you can corner us. So, <laughs> um, oh, and, and tangentially related to that also, there is a, a thing that we used to do that we restarted last year, uh, called the net coder boff, um, which is just sort of, a an, an assemblage of people who write software for network related things. So if you have any. If you have any, any anything that you're doing that's interesting that you can give a short five or six minute talk on, um, you're you're welcome to join us. Um, the the uh, the topics have been pretty pretty wide ranging. So, um, and I think I've run out of stuff to plug. <laughs>
All right, going once, going twice. All right, sounds like another successful uh, person or office hours. So we will post the video once it's uh, done recording. And we hope everybody has a good couple weeks. We don't have any more talks scheduled. So since Mark has done a good job of plugging all of his things, I'll plug mine. Uh, we're about to, to head into 25. I doubt that we'll have any, any talks through the end of the year, but we're going to need to start scheduling them for next year. So please tell your home institutions or anybody who would be interested in trying to give a talk, please do. Uh, as soon as we run out of material, we run out of runway with this project. So it'll end when there's nothing else to say. So please, please get us some talks and we'll talk to everybody soon. Yep. And we'll do this again in three months. Okay. Yep. There we go. All right. Bye all. Thanks all.